Hello, and welcome to this week's Glass Tire Top 5. It is the week of February 6th, yep, 2020. That's... I'm Christina Reese. I'm William Saradat. And we are counting down the top five art events in Texas this week. We are at the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art, and we will get to that in just a second. Number five is a solo show by Noah Wakefield at Five and J Gallery on the campus of Cass mm -hmm. in Lubbock. And that opens February 7th for the First Friday Art Trail. Yeah, so Noah Wakefield is, uh, we know him as a metal artist. He works with metal, heavy metal. So I jury the inaugural Cass Fest in the springtime of last year. And one of the sort of prizes that they do with these big group open shows is give uh, an award. And sort of the top award was to give a solo show to an artist who was in that big open call show. I like Noah Wakefield's work, so I gave him a solo show at CASP, and this is the opening of that show. What I like about this is that he, even though he normally works with metal, uh, uh, he decided to start doing oil painting. And he's doing these oil painting, basically portraits of tools. And I have not seen them in person, although I was uh, living in Lubbock for my residency over the summer when he started to work on these paintings. He was very excited about it. I think that this show is gonna be a combination of his uh, portraits his oil portraits of tools as well as some of his metal work. And what is unusual is that this show will be open, I think, for the entire month of February. Five and J Gallery doesn't typically have exhibitions open for quite that long. So it'll be nice to see a local resident reevaluating their relationship to the tools they use to make their work. Our number four pick this week is Tommy Gregory at Great Contemporary in Houston, which closes February 15th. So Tommy Gregory, we actually put a show that he curated on our list, I think it was last week or the week before, a San Antonio show of glass art. Mm -hmm. He's an artist and um, all of this work is work that's cast in bronze. He lives in Seattle now. He was in charge of the public art at the airport system in Houston. Now he does the same sort of job for the Port uh, Authority in Seattle. He still obviously has a very strong uh, Texas presence, but anyway, he had all these things that we would probably associate with trash, things that we throw away, cast in bronze, these lovely little objects throughout Gray Contemporary. The show's not open that much longer. It ends on the 15th, but it's nice to still have some piece of Tommy Gregory here. Uh, in Texas. We're all fans of him and his work and his curation and check that out before it closes. Number three on our list this week is The Pleasure of Making at Icosa in Austin. This show is curated by Tammy Rubin, a member of the Icosa Collective. Mm -hmm. Here she's selected um, a group of artists. It's all craft. It's traditional crafts um, and of course there's been kind of an invasion of craft into our idea of what fine art is. I think that her approach to it is about kind of the therapeutic quality of a person delving into traditional craft as a way to sort of deal with our contemporary world, the craziness of our contemporary world. If you're following the fine art gallery scene, the commercial gallery scene in Texas as of the past few years, you might notice there's a lot more um, traditional ceramics mm -hmm. that are entering Textiles the marketplace. also. Right. Yeah. And these are things that uh, a few years ago, if you talked to a gallerist or an artist working in those works, you might hear a little hesitation about participating in uh, fine art gallery spaces, mm -hmm. but that's changing. So she's, she's a good artist herself, and I think that, and she's a professor at St. Ed's in Austin as well, but I like this response to things, and we're all kind of pretty, I think that we're all pretty susceptible to and um, responsive to these things that are so clearly made by an individual's hand, and I think that she's chosen a good group of artists. The images that I've seen are great. The show ends on the 15th as well, so you just have a little bit more time to see it, but catch it at Icosa before it comes down. So number two on our list this week, we are really excited about this. It just opened on February 1st. It is at the Harry Ransom Center, the great Harry Ransom Center, UT Austin. They have the archives of Gabriel Garcia Marquez. They acquired it a few years ago, and he died a few years ago. This is a show of his archive, basically. I think there are 300 objects in this show that contextualizes his uh, uh, career as one of the greatest novelists of the last generation. Gabriel Garcia Marquez was born in Colombia, lived in Mexico City for most of his life. Mm -hmm. 
he was a Nobel Prize winner in 1982. Mm -hmm. He wrote Love in the Time of Cholera and 100 Years of Solitude. Harry Ransom Center puts on these kinds of exhibitions from time to time. They do, and they're good at contextualizing the work. I think that they're bringing in some manuscripts and work by some of his colleagues, some of his peers as well. As far as I know, there will be manuscripts, uh, photos, there's video in this show. I'm not exactly sure what that's going to be, but in a, you know, if you're a fan of his work or if you uh, want to delve into it, and if you haven't, you should. This is a good introduction to, um, to his body of work. So number one on our list is we're here at the Amon Carter Museum of American Art in Fort Worth, and this show is opening this weekend. It is called The Perilous Texas Adventures of Mark Dion, and he is an incredibly well-known, very respected artist, lives and works in New York State and the Amon Carter asked him if he would like to do a show here. His angle is that he's taken previous Texas explorers um, like Olmsted and Audubon and he's retraced their steps. He spent a couple of years traveling throughout Texas and he's created work like this beautiful cabinet that we see behind us. But he's the, also what he's done is he's taken some of just the incredibly rich collection of this amazing museum. He's brought it out to recontextualize it for today. Um, it's a way of sort of looking at the issues and politics of the past and bringing it into the current day. Um, he's very playful with it. There's nothing condescending or patronizing about it. You know, when artists who are like, from Norway and they move to Berlin and then they come to Texas and they do a show about Texas and it's all pickup trucks and bullets and they show us what's wrong with us and how awful and trashy we are. This is not that show. I hate that kind of thing. And this is absolutely the opposite of this. This is respectful, it's sweet, it's charming. It's a great way to see some stuff that uh, the Eamon Carter has already. Those Audubon prints are so absolutely stunning, but there's a lot of good work that's out and um, being presented. And then he's presented himself as a new intrepid explorer of Texas. And so even in this cabinet behind us, we've got everything from breakfast cereal to golf balls to, I don't know, scorpions and snakes. And he's created this wonderful wallpaper that I would put all over my house if I could. Uh, it's, it's not about cliche. It's very, very affectionate. It feels like you're re-exploring it while um, Mark Dion is maybe coming to terms with it for the first time. Um, it does feel generous and affectionate, mm -hmm. and it's uh, lots to look at. There's lots to see. It's nice to see our state through new eyes, especially eyes that are as smart as his. I think the Amon Carter has done such a bang up job with their contemporary exhibitions in the last few years. I love this museum. It will be up through May 17th. You got a little bit of time to see it. I mean, anytime I've got an excuse to come to the Amon Carter, I come to the Amon Carter. I find it extremely reassuring. Thank you.